Welcome to St. Petrie Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Tim Malik. I'm delighted that you all are here, uh, all of you in person as well as, as those joining us online. It's the first Sunday of Advent, so we're... Uh, it's a, a Happy New Year, I should say, right? Because in the church calendar, uh, the first Sunday of Advent is the first Sunday in the new liturgical calendar year. If it's comfortable for you to stand, I invite you to do so now as we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another in your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. We sing, wake, awake, for the night is flying. The words will be on the screen, or you can look up hymn number 436. The 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing the first two verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel as our hymn of praise. your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save Save us from from the threatening dangers of our sins, and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Just a minute, Albert. Let's move this one. Thank you. (coughs) The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord into Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up swords against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read with me Psalm. 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. Because of the house of the Lord. Our God, I will seek to do you good. Second reading is from 13th chapter of Romans. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we become believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the work of darkness and pull out, pull on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Do we have some Do we have some children out there? Come on up. <clears throat> There's lots of things to look at up here today. Oh good, Jeannie's young. She's still a kid. Come on down. Okay, just have a seat where you can see everything. You can come on up here. Okay. So, Today is the first Sunday in Advent. Hmm. You know how the year starts in January, February, March, April, May? That's the calendar year. But today is the first sort of month of the church calendar, and it's Advent. Do you know what Advent means? Have any idea? You know what Advent means? An advent means something or something very important is coming. Does that give you a clue? So who is coming this time of year? Jesus. Jesus. It's almost Christmas, Kara, and we celebrate the birthday of baby Jesus. Look behind you. You see baby Jesus down in there? He's laying in a manger of hay. Okay, so we're starting Advent today. And it's time to get ready for Christmas. How do people get ready for Christmas? Exactly, Christmas decorations. What do we have here in the church? The Christmas tree. The Christmas tree and the nativity. What are some other ways that people get ready for Christmas? Yeah. People buy presents. What, David? Tree. Yeah, that's what um, Allison said, the tree. There's a big tree uptown, too. Um, some people like to listen to a lot of Christmas music on the radio. I think they start it way too soon. But anyway, um, people decorate the outside of their homes. Some people sort of go crazy getting really, really busy at Christmas time. Hmm. That's all stuff we can see out there. What about our hearts? How do we get our hearts ready 
for baby Jesus being born. We can pray. We can come to church. Um, there's lots of different ways you can give. You can give to toys for tots. You can give to the food pantry. Um, all sing, sorts of things. You can go caroling and sing for people. Um, and you can just love each other. That's how we prepare our hearts for Jesus. But Advent is also a time to celebrate, and this is hard to understand, that we're getting ready for Jesus to come again. In the Bible, when Jesus was alive, he promised that someday he would come back to earth to take us all back to heaven with him. Wow, cool, huh? It might be while I'm alive. It might be 200 years from now. Nobody knows when that's going to happen. But we have to be ready in our hearts. Hmm. And then the gospel that, that um, is going to be read, the writer Paul tells us to wake up and be ready. And the light of Jesus will help us to be good people. The light of Jesus will help us um, live in a way that Jesus wants us to live, to love each other, take care of each other. And, hey, that sounds a lot like getting ready for baby Jesus to come, doesn't it? We prepare the same way. So this Christmas, I know you guys wouldn't do this, but don't think about what you can get for Christmas. There, we all want certain toys or certain things, but don't think about what you can get for Christmas. Think about what you can give to other people. You'll be happier in the long run. So today we're going to light the Advent wreath here pretty soon. It's called an Advent wreath. It has four candles on the outside, one for each Sunday before Christmas, and then it's got the Christ candle in the middle, the white one that we light at Christmas time. And it's called the Hope candle, the one we're going to light, light today. So 2,000 years ago, before Jesus was born, the people that lived back then had hope in the promise that Jesus would be born. And it came true. And today, we have hope in the promise that Jesus will come again to save the earth. Okay? So, pray. With, I'm just going to say a little prayer. Dear Jesus, we look forward to your return someday. Help us to live in a way that pleases you so we will be ready. Amen. Now, you two are lucky because you get to help pastor light the first candle. So I'm going to let him get that ready. You can both stand up and go over there and help him. Praise to you, O oh God, our salvation is near. You hold us in your waiting and keep us in the world. You show up in our lives at unexpected times. Bless us as we light this candle Stay here. to <laughs> keep the vigil for your arrival. We trust that even though we do not know the day or the hour, you hurry to gather all people to your peace. Amen. So we're going to sing a little song, but you guys stay here. I have something for you, okay?
Thank you, Joe. Thank you, children. If it's comfortable to stand, let's do so as we receive the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known and what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. You You may be seated. So in this sermon, it's going to have three moves. Uh, The first is going to be to tell you what this is not about, this passage. The second is to talk a little bit like Joe did in the children's sermon about this day in the church calendar. The third is how I think it all pulls together and has meaning for us in this day and age that we live in. So the first is this this passage in Matthew, this whole chapter 24, is what's referred to as a mini-apocalypse. And we've talked about apocalyptic literature in the past. You know, the book of Revelation, the whole book is an apocalypse. Uh, The book of Daniel in the Old Testament, parts of Matthew, even parts of Luke, are of what they call the apocalyptic genre, which was literature that was meant to comfort people who were being persecuted or had things very tough. But in the last hundred years or so, some Christians have taken these passages and made them something that they're not. They wanted to make them about predicting the future, about a roadmap for the future. And there was this... uh, line of thought, sometimes referred to as dispensationalism, uh, sometimes talked about as rapture. And things like the Left Behind series of books and movies are a part of that. Uh, When I was a kid and went to Bible camp, one of my favorite songs was a part of it. It was called I Wish We'd All Been Ready. I don't know if any of you remember that song or not. Um, But it's meant to be kind of scary that we need to be ready because there'll come a day when all the saved will be taken away and only the unsaved will be left behind to suffer the tribulations of a trial period. Well, that's not supported by scriptures, not even in the book of Revelation. So keep that in mind. I'm going to come back to this Matthew passage. Joe was correct in her children's sermon saying that Advent is a time of preparing for the advent of Christ. Both as we look past, and I'm going to use stage left here as the past, celebrating the birth of Christ, which happened over 2,000 years ago, celebrating God being made flesh, celebrating something we call the incarnation, that the word of God, Jesus, was enwrapped in flesh. And we confess even more than that, every atom in his being was both fully divine, God, and fully human, all together. And that's still the case. The word of God is still incarnated, just not right here except in spirit and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So yes, we celebrate on an annual basis the great event of Christ's birth. The Word of God made flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. And it's important. Thinking about future tense, as Joe rightfully said, is thinking about the return of Christ. That someday in the future, 
And the early Christian church thought it was going to happen any day. In fact, you know, Matthew and Luke were written down about 50 years after Jesus was walking with the disciples. And people were starting to lose faith, starting to have doubts. We thought Christ was coming back. And so this literature was meant to also help them keep persevering, have faith. God promises will come true. Christ will come again. There will be a time when all things are made right. As I've said before, just a couple of weeks ago, there will come a time when God finally gets what God wants. Peace, love for all, reconciliation. That is a future reality that God has promised. So that's the, the two things that we have for Advent. So here's my challenge for you and how we're going to go forward with this text, but also, I think, with Advent. Now, this may be hard to imagine, but we're going to pretend and get out our lassos. And we're going to stand in the middle here, which is present day today, two days after Thanksgiving, three days. And we're going to swing our lassos, and we're going to throw it over the past. And we're going to pull it right up, pull, pull, pull right up here to the current. We're going to tie it off. And we're going to get another lasso out. Whoop. Lasso the future. Pull, pull, pull. Tie it off. Past, future, right here in the present. I know this sounds kind of crazy. But I think both of these things aren't just something that we think about historically past or something that we anticipate future. I think what this passage is talking about is the here and the now. This one person and the two people in the field, one's taken, the other's left. Two people grinding meal, two women, one is taken, one's left. That's not about them take, being taken away by God. It doesn't say that. This was a time when the Romans were brutally oppressing Israel. Who do you think would take somebody away against their will in their time period? I think we need to contemporize this sudden interruption in life. Two co-workers. One is stricken with cancer. And one is left. Two couples get married. One has a divorce, the other still is married. Two people go to a Walmart. One is shot dead. Life. You know, two people walking down a street in Ukraine and the missiles fly. One is left and one isn't. Part of the fabric of the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, the Jewish way of life, was these two constant things that were in tension. One was unsatisfaction with what was going on in the world around them. And if you think about it, Jesus was the same way. And you and I are to be the same way. We look around us and we say this um, unrelenting slaughter of people through violence, whether it's war, whether it's guns in our streets, um, whether it's you know, the way that it's glorified through media, that's not God's way. We have to be brave enough to say some of these things are not according to God's will. And that's just the violence. What about hunger and disparity? What about uh, people who are bullied and, and mistreated? Sometimes it's stuff right in front of us. Sometimes it's stuff, of course, we see on the world stage. Whether it's Russia bullying Ukraine, or if it's something up closer, um, some of the awful stuff that happens in our schools every, every day, every week. In our workplaces, goodness gracious, bullying doesn't end in high school, right? Uh, I've known plenty of adults who've been bullied. I've been, a, I've been bullied as an adult at times. That's not God's way. So we, part of what we're, our challenge today, holding in attention the, the previous advent and the coming advent, is seeing a world that is not the way God wants it. And then, also, the second thing 
is realizing that the promises of God are certain and true. God didn't give up on the people of Israel when they were captive in Egypt. The story of Exodus, you know, the recurring theme is being saved by God's mighty arm, pulling them out of danger, getting them across the Red Sea. It's a birth story, a story of salvation, being provided for in the wilderness, being delivered into the promised land and God's promises for the future, the restoration of the kingdom of God. With Jesus, we see God on the cross and through the empty tomb and ascension, that God has defeated death. But we're in this place where we still experience death and all its sorrow and grief and some of the evil that's attendant to those deaths. But we hang on to the promise of God that it will eventually be done away with. There will come a time of no more grief or pain or sorrow or mourning. That's the work of Advent. It's the work of Christians year-round to have our eyes of faith opened and to observe where God is already at work. You know, it may not seem like a big deal to you, But it is a big deal that this community, which St. Peter is a part of, feeds so many people through loaves and fishes and through the Iowa Food Bank. That we do so many other good things to, to help people, whether it's through Habitat for Humanity, through the Good Gifts Program, through the ELCA, the ways that we help with Lutheran immigration and refugee services. I know this church has a history going back decades in that regard, and there may be new opportunities for us going forward, to be actively looking for God's work in our midst. Sometimes that happens through us. And then being propelled forward, excited, enthused by the Holy Spirit because of the promises of God that are sure and certain. Christ will come again someday. And it's going to be wonderful. God bless you this Advent season. Know that this is the place to come when life is conspiring against you. Whether it's you that got that cancer diagnosis or a loved one, whether it's you that's celebrating the happy anniversary of a good marriage, or you're the one that's had to suffer one or more divorces or estrangement from your kids, Know that all of those things are worthy of being brought here to find consolation and comfort from your mutual believers in Christ and to be brought here to God, to be given over to God. We just went through Thanksgiving weekend, and I don't know about you, but there's lots to be thankful for. But there's also kind of a time to think about how our families have changed over the years, often with many good things but also if we're honest with some sorrow and grief and maybe even some pain and turmoil. God has all of that in the palm of God's hands. And we can rest in the promises that God is here to provide healing and reconciliation and care. And we are a part of that work that goes on today. Leaning into God's promised preferred future. Someday God will get everything that God wants. Let's stand to sing our hymn of the day, which is My Lord, What a Morning, hymn number 438.
me in the creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy. God of peace. You judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. Pray for la we pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth and also for peace in Ukraine. God, in your mercy. God of loving kindness. You desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger. Comfort the grieving and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care. We pray especially for Duane, Jacob, Bev, Alice, Ben, Laura, Barb, Audrey, Olive, Howard, Helen, Paul, Darlene, Linda, Mark, Kay, the family and friends of John, the family and friends of Troy. Grant them all your healing and peace. God, in your mercy. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. 
Guide congregations in transition or conflict. Give wisdom to congregational councils, call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. God, in your mercy. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you, especially John and Troy. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. We also pray that you bless those who are celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, including Diane, Jason, Gloria, Kay, Cole, Deborah, Helen, and Sawyer. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with one another. You can be seated after the, you've greeted people. And uh, just a reminder that we're passing the plates once again uh, for offering. And it's the best practice is to pass them down every pew, recognizing that some of us give monthly or even annually, not always weekly, but it's still part of the ritual practice, uh, symbolic of the ingathering of gifts that every person is a part of. Uh, not just financially, but also of their time and, and thoughts and efforts. So I we commend this practice to you. They'll be passing the plates shortly. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to all the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This uh, gift of grace is for all people. All are welcome to receive the sacrament. Uh, you'll be coming up the center aisles and receiving a little bit of bread and then moving to the next server who will hand you a small cup of red wine. If you prefer uh, white grape juice, we're back to grape juice, not lemonade today. So um, you can ask for that and they'll give it to you. There's waste baskets for the empty cups at the end of the row here. Um, again, all are welcome. All is ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us towards your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Creation Station, that's been a great thing the last couple of weeks in the back. No Sunday school today. They'll resume next week, and it's all the important rehearsals for Christmas program that's coming up. So, Oh, and there is some more information about it. Practice is on the 4th and the 11th. Gifts for Baby Jesus, uh, that's the program, will be 9.30 on the 18th. So it's a regular worship service, but we'll have the Christmas program as the proclamation of the word. Quilt making will be next week, I mean this coming week, after Thanksgiving, the 28th through the 30th, 9 till noon. Youth group does meet this coming Wednesday, middle school group. If you're interested in helping, there's details in the bulletin. Men's Bible study will resume on Thursday at 8. Holiday cookie walk, any announcements about that? Betty? Uh, we're going to make uh, potato cakes on Thursday afternoon at 1.30. So if anyone uh, would like to help with that, even if you've never done it before, you can probably still get potato cakes. So if you're interested, come and join us. Um, I'm looking for three people to be willing to cook a five-pound bag of potatoes on Wednesdays. Um, ideally, they are ripe. Great. Looking forward to that. That'll be great. Um, that same Saturday, the 3rd, we're uh, helping out at Loaves and Fishes. There's more information in the bulletin. The Sunday um, high school youth group, high school plus 8th grade, they'll, they'll meet next on the 11th of uh, December. We're looking to recruit a couple more people to help out with communion setup. And that's a rotation, but maybe three or four times a year. Angel Tree program, there's tags. Are there any tags left downstairs? Do you know, Betty? Yeah. There might be one or two left for the Angel Tree. Poinsettias, uh, there's an order form in the bulletin. Uh, we need help in December with Meals on Wheels. It's our turn to do Wednesdays in December. We have a YouTube channel. And before we get to that, Rick's got a, our... Rick Stover's our treasurer, and he has an update about our parable of talents. Good morning. Uh, we had our parable of talents um, turn in last, sun last Sunday, and uh, just to give you the totals on that, um, after taking out the $700 setup money that was given, we netted uh, there was $2,487.10. And I understand there's still some more money that may be coming in. Yeah, great. Well, give yourselves a little hand for that. So $700 turned into almost $2,400, plus we got more coming. Great. Well, stand if it's comfortable to do so. We'll God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
children's sins forgiven at peace and pure. <clears throat> My children fed and nourished closer to me. serving joyful and free. In my spirit's power filled you, in my tender comfort stilled you. Go, my children, fed and nourished, joyful We are disciples of Jesus Christ, called to grow in Christ and to invite all to follow him. Go in peace. Christ is near. <laughs>